It's late spring and your zucchini and summer squash are up growing and they even have tiny flower buds and maybe even some tiny little squash. A great harvest is just around the corner, but then out of nowhere. I came out the other day to check on the new planter that I built a few weeks ago and what were the previous day, beautiful, green, healthy squash and zucchini plants were wilted, dying, and basically rotted off at ground level. This had never happened to me before, so I had no idea what I was dealing with. So I scoured the internet and I came up with pretty much just two possibilities. Uh, the first one is vine borer. Vine borer starts by a wasp looking moth that lays eggs inside the squash stem near soil level. The larva grows inside and basically eats the stem from the inside out until the plant withers and dies from lack of water and nutrients that are no longer able to flow up the stem and into the plant. I examined the affected plants and there was no holes in the stem. There were no larvae inside the stem. So that wasn't what I was dealing with. Now, if you are dealing with that issue or you have, what's the best way to prevent it and deal with it once you have it? Like everything, it starts with prevention. And if you know you live in an area where you are prone to get the squash vine borer, then you probably want to do both of these things. The first thing, when you plant out your squash, put out some yellow bowls of water around the planting area. The squash borer moth is attracted to yellow and will fall in and drown. You also want to use row covers until the plants begin to bloom. The exception to this, though, is if you've had squash planted in the same location the previous year. The squash vine borers will overwinter in the ground and will be trapped under the row cover, basically in a nice little tent to eat everything you have. Once the plants begin to bloom, you want to take those row covers off so you can let the pollinators get in there and start pollinating your plants. But once you do that, you're still going to need to protect that stem for a while longer. So what you want to do is take some aluminum foil and wrap it around the stem from beneath the soil level right up to the first leaves. If despite these attempts, your plants are still attacked, you can try and kill the borer inside the stem. Chances are slim that it's going to save your plant, but if you do nothing, your plant's going to die anyway. So what you want to do is starting at the, almost the base of the soil, you want to take a knife, a sharp one that's disinfected with some alcohol, slice along the stem until you find the borer. And then you can basically stab the borer <laughs> to death inside the stem and hopefully um, that will save your plant. Now you'll want to do this as soon as the plant starts to wilt. If you wait longer, you really don't have a chance at all. But if you do that, it could help. Once you've got that borer killed, mound up some compost around the stem in that area, around where the cut is, and the plant will uh, possibly put out some new roots to help it survive. Now, I found out doing my research that we don't have the vine borer here on the Pacific coast, and that's why I've never had this problem before um, or never seen one. So counting myself lucky, I moved on to the next possible culprit, and that would be root or crown rot caused by the fungus Fusarium solani. And I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly, so I'm going to put it right here on the screen so you can look it up if this is a possibility for you. It lives in the soil and even on or in the seed. Since this is a new planter and the soil was imported, I have no way to know if it came in the soil or the seed that I planted. Once you have it though, the fungus lives in the soil for up to three years. So a four year crop rotation should take care of it. I still have healthy plants in this bed, so I don't want to, you know, dig everything up and start over again. I would rather wait till the end of the season, or if this was the beginning of the season, you can soak the soil with um, some expensive fungicides, which aren't 100% effective and maybe not 100% safe either. Um, you can also sterilize the soil with black plastic, but again, there can't be any plants there for that. So I'm hoping to get through this season and then maybe take care of it um, at the end of the season. One thing I learned is the fungus thrives on dampness. 
and I noticed when I was looking at the, the plants that had died that the hay that I used to mulch the plants was really close up around the stems. So I pulled it away and I didn't water for a few days and for now at least it seems to have stopped. It's been a week and I've had no more plants wilt and die. In fact, they're looking really good. Um, but I'll keep you updated. If something else happens and I have to go, you know, a different route and actually do something, you know, I'll have to tackle that when it comes, but hopefully I can wait till the end of the season. If you've had either of these problems in your garden and found a different solution that worked for you, please let me know in the comments. Hopefully the next video will be a more positive subject matter, but that's gardening. You got to deal with the good, the bad, and the ugly. Please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.